There we go. Let's go. Yes, people, welcome to Off Scripts. Now we're joined by a very special guest. You are the man that's got KSI in such phenomenal shape, such dangerous shape. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, very well. Very looking well. forward to the fight. Yeah, looking forward to it. We just saw KSI in the ring. Well, now he was just, just moving about, but how are you feeling about it? Is he all tip top? Yeah, we're great. No great. injuries, um, best shape of his life, fast as he's been, yeah. strong as he's been, best sparring, mm -hmm. best sparring partner he's ever had. So, can't get a better place. So it's going to be a treat on Saturday night. Yeah, he's going for it, 100% okay. for it. Okay. So, so, talk me through a little bit about going through a 9 and 0 boxer. I know you've had him in camp occasionally yeah. and you've had that relationship with him. How do you feel going into this fight Saturday night? Yeah, I think if we if we hadn't sparred with guys that are 13 and 0, 7 and 0, 8 and 0, like, if we haven't sparred with good guys, you'd, you'd understand going in there without, um, without too much confidence. But we have, we sparred all those kind of guys. So, we're going into the fight as we've gone into the spars with great confidence because they've gone well. And the kind of spars that we have, no one's trying to help him out, no one's walking him out, no one's being nice with him. Everyone's trying to get him. Uh, so he's doing really well. Now talk to me a little bit about KSI's development over the years. Obviously we saw him, but when he first came to you, he was wild, <laughs> yeah, swinging, wild, but he had that heart. Now we're starting to see a bit more technique being implemented. How have you developed that over the years? Yeah, I think the most important thing to realize with someone like uh, KSI is that he is dangerous and he has, he's, really he he's a heavy handed kid. And what you don't want to do is teach him how to box traditionally because what you'll do is you take away that, that, that danger part. Now, if we, had a, if we had a real long journey of showing someone how to box and you had years of doing it, you could say, okay, we're going to teach you this way to throw punches. But we have a, a date and we sign, a, we sign on a bit of paper and we're contract killers, so we have to fight a guy on a certain date. So our job is to keep him really, really dangerous, really, really fit and have a good timing. So I think that there's a lot of things he can improve on, but ultimately we also, we're on a short, we have a short amount of time to get from A to B, you know, back to backing fights. Um, so he's improved massively, and there's loads more to improve on, but he's, still, he's ultimately really dangerous. Now, obviously, last time we spoke to you, we spoke a little bit about KSI's mental health and how, he's been, how his mental state's been faring. So I was wondering, as we're now approaching the fight night, how's he doing? Is he confident? Is he happy? Yeah, he's in the best place he's ever been. Okay. You know, mentally. There's no, it's nice going into a fight and, you know, coaching-wise and saying, you know, that this fighter, he couldn't be in a better place. He's yeah. being and he's lifting and he's running and he's sprinting and he's sparring. He's never done more rounds consecutively. Uh, his cardio is great. You know, yeah. you, you can't really, like what we're doing with him athletically is just peaking him off. Yeah. We're not trying to, you know, he's going to be hitting something real hard on Saturday night. We don't need to hit any pads now. Yeah. Now we know KSI, sorry my friend, sometimes he can get a bit hot headed. Now last time they came face to face, that was, that was a shove. Has that sort of motivated him any more or is it just cool? I think the fact that most people think he's not going to do very well is motivating him. He's that type okay. of guy. A lot, a lot of people are saying that he might, maybe he, uh, we've bitten off and he's been off more than we can chew. And I think that's a good, it's a good thing to have. That, that drive, it's a yeah. good thing to have. I think, I, think it's, I think it's spurred him on even more. Mm. And he's a real hard worker anyway, so. 100%. So I wanted to touch base a little bit. You said about this power. Everyone said about it, Vidal said it. Talk to me a little bit about that power. What is it like? Do you train proper real boxers as well? Yeah. How does his, his power fare to you? Yeah, I genuinely, he's genuinely heavy handed. So that's just, it's just, you know, some kids are, some kids aren't. Um, he's not, he's not a, you know, he, when you say someone's heavy handed, it's not like, they're not, he's not a volume puncher. He doesn't hit you loads and knocks you out. He hits you once, and then, and then you hit the ground. That's the idea of being heavy-handed. And he's got that, but it's up to us to make sure he throws the right punch at the right time. He's not in line for the shot, and we're setting things up. So a lot comes with it, because like uh, I'm sure Jake Paul's heavy-handed, but he couldn't land that one shot on Tommy, right? Mm. It wasn't the right timing. But I think we have to give him that timing. That's the difference. Well, Kels actually tweeted saying he's now starting to read the shots. Yeah. He started to time it. Talk me for a little bit how that sparring sessions have started to go with those higher level pros. Yeah, look, I think as they get higher and higher, it gets easier in a lot of ways. In the, they're traditional, they're throwing punches in straight lines. There's not this wildness. Sometimes with, with a lot of the influencers, sometimes they can be a bit loose. And it's good, but loose. And you can't really time a slip and a shot. Whereas when they do with pro boxers, you kind of know where that punch is coming from. So I think the traditional sense is when he's sparring better guys, he gets to time certain things. But when you're sparring guys that are a bit loose and they're trying to kill you, you just have to dig in and beat them up rather than try and time them. It's very hard to time a guy like that. Now, some fans and sort of boxing experts are very curious to see how KSI will perform in the later rounds. Do you think we'll finally see him in the later rounds against Joe or is it going to be an early start? I think it all depends on Joe, okay. if, if, I'm, if I'm honest. I think if Joe comes out wild and think, thinks he can swing, I think it's going to be an early night. I don't think he can swing with, with the younger heavy hitter. Yeah. Um, if he decides to use his experience, which would probably be the right thing to do, yeah. and carry in the round and try and drain it, you know, I think you're going to see a good football. I think that's when you're going to see some boxing. Now you've seen obviously KSI in those later rounds. Yeah. Does he still carry that power? Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's trained. 
you can you you're never allowed to go to a race unless the horse can run it. Okay. We you can't we can't go to, we can't take JJ to a six round fight unless he can do six hard rounds. Uh -huh. And he can do six hard rounds. Oh, so, you're getting me excited now. You're yeah, oh, that's excited. it. So you know, it's, you, you, it's just something that we, you know, obviously you got to remember. It's like Jake going into the fight with Tommy. He yeah. thought he could do eight. He got hit a couple of times, and that eight was terrible. It wasn't yeah. a good pace. Mm. But I think getting hit does that to you as well. 100%. It takes the pace out of you. Yeah. So you know, if things go well, JJ's pace is fantastic. So as of recent, we had a, a, a rival a tournament that happened, yes. but I just wanted your thoughts and opinions on what you made of those actual fighters of that tournament. Yeah, in, in reference to JJ? In, in to reference guess, to I, JJ and like, did anyone impress you? No, I guess maybe Winderson had a little bit more game than people thought he had um, from a boxing ability point of view, but no one, no one really um, impressed me. They're all nice guys, they're all good guys, but I'm, I, I'm just speaking comparatively to JJ, because yeah. we've seen some of those guys spar JJ in the gym. So comparatively to JJ, um, I understand why he, people don't want him fighting influencers. He's not an influencer, he's fighting professional boxers. So you get, there is a clear definitive difference between those guys. So you said about sparring some of these influencers. When we actually interviewed Daly that, that week, he said there was a spar between Kenny and JJ. And he said there was a standing ovation that was competitive. What do you actually make of that? And do you think it's still competitive to this day? Yeah, no, I think JJ went to help out his brother that day he did 10 rounds back to back with Deji and Kenny so it okay. wasn't a, it wasn't it he wasn't, wasn't a press <laughs> no also we told him he's not allowed to hit his brother oh, we're oh. Not, I, we, he's not allowed to no he wasn't he was just riding the punches going up we're not it's not about that pay-per-view for us we don't want him to Deji's a great kid of course and we, we, we he wanted to go help him to spa it wasn't uh, actual yeah Spa. Well, speaking on Deji, obviously he's fighting on the same night as his brother. That's great. What were you saying on his ability? Is he going to go in there and then wipe the floor of Swarms? Or? Yeah, look, I, I think I, I think Swarms have got something to prove, but I think Deji's being Deji the southpaw, unless you've sparred southpaws. Yeah. Uh, I think Swarms might walk into something, but you know he's a game kid, and I think it'll be a fun fight, and it'll, I think it'll probably bring out the fight in Deji. Yeah. Which is kind of what you want. Yeah. yeah. You want to know if he's got that heart. Yeah. When you pressure Deji, it's what you want back. Yeah. That's what you're looking for. So yeah, hopefully it goes well for him. So obviously there's an array of people that want to fight KSI. Everyone wants that KSI fight. Now talk to me, what is your end goal with KSI with Pretty that simple. fight? Jake Paul. Jake Paul. There's nothing. We've offered the fight. We had booked a, we had a stadium booked for December. He didn't he didn't turn it down. So I yeah, I get it. Then, I, then we thought, okay, you're gonna rematch Tommy, but he didn't want to rematch Tommy. And it's not uh, that Nate Diaz so fight. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know if you're serious or not, but I think there's a few people in the space that um the JJ can, the KSI can go for. And I think that's who we should go for. So I think if the likes of Jake Paul, the likes of Tommy Fury, um, any of the other guys that are, that are winning tournaments. Yeah, I was no going to say, another opponent is Salt Pappy. However, KSI yeah. came out and rebranded him as three round Pappy. What do you make of him fighting only three rounds? Well, I don't think it should round? happen. Okay. Uh, with all due respect, uh, uh, he's a, you know, a kid can box a little bit. Yeah. Anti Taylor can definitely box. He doesn't get put away. He's a tough kid. Yeah. So why is it three round? It definitely wouldn't be because of Anti Taylor, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume so. You wouldn't, I mean, they would, yeah, well, exactly. yeah. I mean, he's gone eight rounds with Tommy Fury. Exactly. He's, got, he's, he's went four rounds. rounds with Idris. Yeah. Virgo. I, I yeah. wouldn't have thought he'd be adverse against someone who technically isn't in as good a shape as him. Mm. So it's obviously coming from him. In fact, it is. We know it is. But yeah. the principle is three rounds is not what any of the guys have ever done on that card before, unless you're doing two fights in one night. Mm. Yeah. So why so, do you think Salt Papi is doing that then? Because his cardio is obviously suspect okay. compared to compared to, to, to Taylor's. I just I don't think we should be making allowances for people. Yeah. Although Misfits is great in that they have insane fights. Mm. Insane. So you don't know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, yeah, which is yeah. fun. But at the same time, I think if you're going to try and match that guy with that guy, yeah. you've got to remember as well, like JJ's walking, uh, KSI's walking around, he's fighting at one, he's fighting at 180 this time, but he could fight at 170. Yeah. And guys, other guys walking around at 185, fighting at 190. And mm. It's all about where you match the weight as well. Yeah. So I think that, with someone like Jake Paul, if he can come down a little bit and we can go up a little bit and meet in the middle, uh, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't really see fight. a problem with it. So I would have thought, you know, Jake Paul, we, we, we're saying he may be ducking this fight. So you're saying that Tommy Fury fight might be available. What do you make of that fight versus KSI and Tommy Fury? And do you think JJ's ready for that yet? Yeah, I think that when you look at all the other pro boxers, uh, um, and you can name all the, any pro boxer you want, tell me anyone that's fought a 9 0 pro within their first three fights. It doesn't happen, right? It doesn't, it doesn't happen. So the idea is that he's ready because he's been ready in the gym. He's ready because he's sparring really hard and he's got those kind of guys. We're not trying to see if we're ready in the fight. Yeah. We really, really think we are ready because we've sparred those guys and we're at that level. Um, so hopefully you see the level up with Joe. I think Joe Fournier is going to be a tough fight, uh, depending on how he wants it. 
I think with Jake, he got found out with Tommy because I think maybe he's been looked after in sparring a little bit in that the pace is different. Mm. I think you guys watching JJ fight, you know that he can be a bit reckless, yes. but he's got pace. Yeah. And that pace, can he carry it through? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's like saying, um, can Mike Tyson carry pace through? Well, yeah, yeah, but did he have to sometimes? Yeah. I think on the right guys, you don't have to. Yeah, pacing up is a nice way to get rid of someone. Mm. Then you can go back into your boxing if it doesn't work. You know, so. You know, well, you kind of answered my final question for you. I was going to say, what message do you have for the doubters out there that are, that are chatting slander on KSI? Like, he's not a pro boxer, he's not this and that. Obviously, you've seen him close up first hand, you've got your hands on him. So what message would you send to them? I think, I think you're right, he's not a pro boxer. He is um, a sports entertainer. Mm. And he's a man that is 100% ready to go to the end. He'll absolutely, he'll, I mean, getting knocked out is the least of his worries. He doesn't care. He's going to go to finish a fight. Yeah. He's going to go for the kill. He's an entertainer. He's got crazy fitness. He's got mad power in his hands. And he's here to entertain you guys. So how can you not like the kid? You can get me excited all the yeah. time, man. How can you not like the kid? He's, yeah. he's going to put his heart on the line. Yeah. We love the kid. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much.